this this update process that we're starting now is just that it's it's an update and so we're not looking at you know reinventing the wheel and rewriting the, the whole plan what we decided to do is that we knew that were there were a few little issues that we cherry picked that we knew we needed to take another look at and and um, uh, you know one of the things that we're trying to manage the Smith River for is a certain level of solitude in what we would call a semi-primitive recreational setting. When people drew a permit, there was just a lot more people going on those permits. So, and that may not sound a lot like a lot, but when you, um, when you look at, well, you say that there's a maximum group size of 15 and, and you, you increase by one whole person, that can be fairly significant over the course of the season as far as the total numbers of people that were floating the river. In, in any kind of heavy use um, river corridor um, where you have especially you know, designated bow camps like we have, you're going to have resource impacts. And when I say resource impacts, I not only natural resource impacts, but also potentially cultural resource impacts. You know, with, with the increase in use, um, you know, as the years have gone on, being one of the trends that we've been tracking, basically average group size increase, um, you know, that, that obviously equates to more vehicles and more people at Camp Baker. And so similar to the resource impacts that we uh, are seeing uh, in the boat camps, Camp Baker is kind of like one giant boat camp, if you will. Um, it, it really started to, to come to light to us as managers that it, it's almost going to become unsustainable to provide, you know, it's becoming more challenging to uh, manage both for day use and overnight camping at Camp Baker. I fell in love with the Smith from the first time I floated it. Um, fished it a bunch with my dad and my brother and um, labor of love, I guess. You know, once you once you get into the Smith River Canyon, you can figure out why that's what it's all about. I mean, during COVID, I've, I felt like the biggest thing FWP did was um, when they closed Camp Baker to overnight camping. Mm -hmm. That was, to me as an outfitter, um, watching what Camp Baker had evolved into, um, it, was, it was nice having it closed to overnight camping. Um, better experience for for guests and i think better experience talking to my friends and family that have floated the smith during that process not having everybody there so many boats tents um it's been it's been a it's definitely been a nicer experience from our standpoint i think our business has been steady um i feel like i i feel like the general public um there's been more increased traffic as far as just people realizing what the Smith River is and wanting to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't think, I don't think my perception would be that it's getting crowded. I mean, I yes. think um, they've done a good job as far as monitoring and, and doing the permit system. Okay. Um, but I feel like they, they need to, group size we've definitely seen increase mm -hmm. over the years. I mean, it used to be two people would go down the Smith and now it's like if somebody draws a permit, they want to fill it. They want to invite everybody which, you know, once you, once you go down the Smith, like I said, that, that makes sense. When you, when you look at the Smith, when you take that many people down, um, you're going to love those camps to death. On, on the weekends, the motels were full. Um, so yeah, I think there was there was more people, and certainly the the restaurants I think yeah. saw uh, definitely more more people. You know, would spend the night, go out, have dinner. Uh, it seemed to me that there was uh, certainly more, and and mm -hmm. I did talk to most of the restaurants in town, and their opinion was that it has had a significant impact on their businesses. You know, what can we do to make the community more attractive so people say, you know what, we are going to go spend a night in White Oak Springs, okay. you know, and uh, enjoy what's there. So any, anything that brings people to White Sulphur, like I say, whether it's the spa, the restaurants, uh, the ski hill, the recreational opportunities here is definitely uh, beneficial for our business. I mean, that's what makes it work is people. Yeah, so anything 
that brings people to the community uh, certainly is beneficial. So, you know, of the four issues that, that we brought forth to our Planning Advisory Committee, you know, some of the changes that they could see would be a change to how we manage Camp Baker, for example. It, it could go to complete day use. We could allow, continue to allow overnight camping, or maybe it could be a hybrid. Um, as far as the issue of uh, um, the, the lottery drawing opportunities, um, it could be uh, something like weight, a weighted lottery or a bonus point system or some, some sort of system that um, would, would just increase the odds of somebody who have, has never floated the river before or who hasn't floated the river in several years to have an opportunity to get on the river. Um, the, the, the human waste issue, um, one of the things that could, could be born out of that would be the fact that people may be required to pack out their human waste. Um, and as far as the uh, natural resource uh, impacts issue, um, you know, the public, it could be anything from, you know, doing some sort of site hardening, in other words, trying to uh, pr protect the site, um, <clears throat> um, site delineation to prevent the growing of, of, this, of the sites and the impacts, um, and then, you know, potentially looking at if we have any opportunities to um, uh, add any additional boat camps.